We are walking in what has to be one of the most beautiful uh, streets of Leiden, if you ask me. And mm -hmm. we have arrived at the St. Peter's Church, the Peterskerk. Um, I think, did Where we... Where you will go in? Yes, I <laughs> think I will go in. Later hey, again. how are you doing? Uh, we'll Sorry. meet uh, Frieke Herkmans here. She's the director of the Peterskerk. And I leave all of you in her capable hands to give us a tour. My God! Frieke, <laughs> it's so wonderful to see you. What? This is, uh, oh, if nothing else, so this was a nice. great excuse to see each other again after all these, uh, these weeks of isolation. Welcome. Yes, um, always in awe walking in here. Um, I just told the viewers I leave them in your capable hands oh. for the next 15, 20 minutes. Oh no, stick uh, with me. Yeah, I would like <laughs> to Stick with me. I'll, I'll stick with you. Um. But please, just, I mean, just go. Just just tell us. Well, all the views you've just entered the Piederskerk uh, Leiden. Uh, uh, next year we'll have our 900 years uh, celebration. And uh, in 1121, this started off as a chapel, and it's now like cathedral size, as we can all see. And uh, ever since the 70s of the last century, it's not uh, uh, a church anymore. So it's now a national monument. As you sometimes joke, God has left the building. It, 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 well, yes, more or less, <laughs> yes. more or less, more or less. Uh, um, but what we do preserve, we preserve 900 years of stories. Yes. And uh, by doing that, we preserve, of course, the stones and the monuments and uh, everything that comes with it. What I'd like to do is, um, uh, because of course we have a huge Pilgrim history, but I'd like to skip uh, uh, a century or so and start off in the 18th century. And I'd like to take you to Jean Lussac, the monument of Jean Lussac. Okay. And uh, Jean Lussac was a Greek professor at the University of uh, Leiden. He was also a lawyer and a political activist. Mm -hmm. And um, he is mostly remembered, and his connection to the uh, uh, American history is connected with that he was the owner and editor of the Gazette of Leiden. Oh, yeah. And the Gazette of Leiden was, as some would say, the most important Western world newspaper of that time. As Thomas Jefferson said about the Gazette of Leiden, uh, he said, it's the only newspaper worth reading. <laughs> And uh, so that That's was some uh, recommendation. yes, and actually uh, uh, the French king uh, Louis the Sixteenth, he 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 only read the Gazette of Leiden, so he didn't read any other newspaper. Now Lussac, uh, um, uh, um, being a political activist, really joined with the American uh, revolutionaries, and um, um, came in contact with John Adams, and as well, you know, but some of our viewers may not know, John Adams was the first um, uh, ambassador ever of the United States and came to the Netherlands and together with his wife, Abigail, and his son, John Quincy, mm -hmm. who later, as John, Ad John Adams, became the second president of the United States and John Quincy Adams was, I think, the fifth or sixth mm -hmm. um, uh, president. And... Jean Lussac, uh, they arrived in the Netherlands and immediately went to Jean Lussac. And what Jean did was make the connection between history from the Netherlands from a few centuries before, and as we call it in, in Dutch, the Acte of uh, Verlatingen, mm -hmm. where we left yes. the Spanish kingdom. And um, he made that connection with the Declaration of Independence. And what he also uh, uh, wrote to, to George Washington and Thomas Jefferson is he told them to realize that we, they were really marking history and would they please put their notes on good parchment. And the best parchment at that time was Dutch parchments from the paper mills not far from Leiden. So he made sure that, uh, that, that, that the Declaration of Independence and the first notes were written on Dutch paper. And actually the first, I think 100 or 200, Ariela from, uh, uh, would know that exactly, but at least 100 of the first copies of the uh, Declaration of Independence were uh, uh, printed on Dutch paper. And I think my, my colleague, uh, 
uh, Boy Heinekamp uh, has got, because that parchment, that one of the paper mills, there's only one paper mill that still exists. It's still left, right? Yeah. And, uh, uh, and actually, it is exactly the paper from that time. It's made exactly on the time and printed the decoration on it. So we have, we have a few limited, but we have a few copies. Uh, um, and um, so that's, you know unusual that there is this enormous connection even on the paper i always jokingly say that the peterskirk is kind of american heritage yes. i mean it's well, light on american it, it, heritage yes. we, 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 it's not we, just the pilgrims there's no so much it's dutch this. heritage but it's also american heritage abroad and there's all these different stories connecting through the centuries connecting the peterskirk uh, and of course you've told the people about the the keys eh? the the symbol. we just we just were discussing it because yes, it's yes. everywhere and you walk the, those the keys those keys are obviously the keys of saint peter which is the peterskirk so you know it's it's it, it derives from the spot where we're on now yeah now i'll take you uh, uh before we walking to the corner where we commemorate the pilgrims we now walk to the nave of the peters kerk with uh, an enormously big and uh, impressive organ uh, uh, but also near the pulpit we have the place where uh, 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 Leiden's most famous son, Rembrandt, uh, uh, spent quite a bit of his time uh, um, because on that spot his parents and his brother uh, were buried next to the pulpit. But more importantly, Rembrandt used to go. Did you go to the Latin school? Have you? Uh, did no, you take? We didn't pass. Yeah. Okay. Well, the Latin school is just around the corner. Yes, it's stone throw away. Yes, and uh, just imagine. Let me take you. Like it's uh, 1619, and uh, pilgrims are still living here, just across the the Peterskerk. And let's say Rembrandt at that time, 13 years old, mm -hmm. just met up again with his friend Jan Lievens, and Jan yeah. Lievens hugely famous uh, uh, painter yeah, his painter. paintings are from you know from the uh, the Getty Museum yeah. to the National Museum in London Rijksmuseum and he, uh, of course all the Lacan also has paintings of him um, Jan Lievens a beautiful painter just a year older than Rembrandt you know and those boys played and fooled around and studied and painted but they would come you know they, they would run around on the square run into the Peterskerk because it would be a, th a throughway to one side of the, the the city to the next so you exactly it was it's a shortcut to go it's through a, the it's church it's a shortcut now I always imagine those two boys running playing drawing and then there would be, let's say, John Robinson contemplating in the Peters Gag, just walking in and just reminding those boys. I need boys. to practice what I'm going to say during the Armenian debates. <laughs> exactly, I'm exactly. He's prepping boys. for the debate. We do not know if they met. We do not know. But it's more than likely. Because well, Frika, I, I, I studied here and yeah. I lived in this part yeah. of Leiden. And, and you run into other. each other yeah. all the exactly. time. You also run into exactly. the people you don't want to exactly. run into. It's inevitable. Yeah. It's such a so small... And they... All of these people were walking these exactly. cobbled streets. That's what I would think. Yeah. So Rembrandt walking here as a boy uh, later on, because his father and mother had married in the Peterskerk, and uh, it being the center, the, the major church uh, of uh, Leiden, and at, at that time, if you could afford it, you could be buried in a church. Later on, after Napoleon, all that uh, ritual stopped, but um, Rembrandt did bury and of course his siblings buried the father and mother and, um, um, and, and the brother uh, Adrian um, here next to the pulpit on the center core of uh, the Peterskerk. We also know that Rembrandt most probably with other boys from the Latin church was a choir boy in the Peterskerk. So no idea what his uh, his voice was like if uh, but they if, heard him sing but that's they for heard sure. him sing so <laughs> for sure you know we've got to. and then we of course have the organ which um, uh, uh, is n now huge and it started off as a small organ it's actually uh, uh, we know about organ even in the 14th century and uh, there are still now about a hundred organ pipes that uh, exist from the times on from 14. The oldest organ pipes are, are, are from 1446. So, uh, and those are the, the 
really the oldest organ pipes in the world still being played. So for sure, the pilgrims and, and, and later on John Adams and, and, so and Adams. even more later on Also uh, George lived Bush. around the corner. We just passed yes. our house, yes, you number passed 45 house. at yes, the yes. Long yes. Bridge. <laughs> yeah. And, and you probably also said, because John Quincy Adams studied at the university, was one yes. of the few presidents that actually spoke uh, Dutch. Yeah, he spoke Dutch. He spoke Dutch, yeah. yeah. So, um, and it still sounds, it's a, it's a beautiful organ. And then we walk to the corner yes. where we have um, a small but permanent uh, exhibition um, on the history of uh, the pilgrims. Um, and it's also the place where John Robinson was uh, buried, or it was the, the, the baptistery was the place where, very near to the baptistery, John Robinson in uh, 1625 was uh, buried because, as we all know, he did not part. And what some of our American and um, English friends will recognize is that in 2014, I went over to England, and that's where all this project started. Yes. And from that came the Mayflower Compact, the modern Mayflower Compact. And uh, our friends might be very pleased that we actually gave it a very prominent place. Yes. And uh, so these are all the people, all the, the cities that from start uh, engaged to commemorate and to make sure that we would not forget about yes. uh, what happened and the modern consequences. Of course, uh, of because course. That's, uh, so in this, uh, um, uh, in this baptistery, uh, um, we have uh, a few panels that explain, I, I heard you uh, talk about civil marriage, so it explains about, uh, about the oh, context. You're watching. <laughs> <laughs> it, it explains about the context of the pilgrims um, arriving in Leiden, and what was Leiden like, and uh, uh, what was important to them, what did they bring, what did they take from what us, did they take and, exactly. and, and take back to, uh, um, uh, to America. And also about the consequences, but because I have to be fair that uh, these panels were changed over the last few years. Yes. And I think uh, uh, we've learned a lot. Yeah, um, I've addressed that in the beginning of yes. our tour, where I say one of the reasons why we wanted to uh, be in this international commemoration is the urgency that we yes. showed these new perspectives, which for a lot of people is Leiden, exactly. but for us was yes. totally the native, uh, native side of the story. Exactly. So this is also why you... Uh, we've changed texts, and we've... Or, yeah. Exactly, because for us it was a journey too, and it uh, made sure, because from the start it was evident that we put the native nations uh, as a partner, and mm -hmm. uh, also um, uh, give them the recognition, uh, uh, because it's not a romantic story. It's... Uh, it's it's, it's quite a dramatic no, history, uh, yeah, story. History is complicated, but if you want to be exactly. uh, precise, so you, you have to yes, see all yes. the perspectives. So that's why... Uh, so we also changed during the years. For us, it was a travel and we changed. So we, uh, we have a panel on uh, Thanksgiving, and every year on Thanksgiving, um, American mainly exp expats. Our good friend Roberta Enschede. Yes, uh, I'm our sure good she's friend. Watching. Yes, yes. Every year she organizes and a lot of Americans with their families come here to commemorate uh, uh, Thanksgiving. Uh, this, this is the place where as an American, it's a bit like Abigail uh, uh, Adams, Adams is, uh, yeah. and that's what Roberta always opens uh, the Thanksgiving yeah. with, with the words of Abigail Ab Adams, uh, who says that uh, in awe she entered the, the Peterskerk. Um, uh, but Thanksgiving also has a different side, and it's, it's a day of mourning for the, for the native nations. So yeah, we were just in the Lacanau where they yes, also uh, yeah. had a so piece about we that. We added that, and uh, um, uh, one of these panels were, of course, um, and, of course, it has been mentioned already, but um, there's an impressive amount of American presidents that descend from uh, the Leiden pilgrims. Nine, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Barack Obama. Yeah, being, including yeah. Barack Obama. For it, a lot of people, that is a surprise. Uh, everybody is. knows about Bush, uh, yeah. junior and senior, but Barack Obama, I think his 13th ancestor was Thomas yes. Blossom, correct? yes. And there is a connection with the Bush family because they're actually far, far, far uh, Nef uh, nephews. Nephews, yeah. yeah. Because uh, uh, Thomas Blossom had, I think, 
about seven children. One of them was Peter, the other one was Elizabeth. And Elizabeth, um, and if, if you go descend, then you end up uh, with uh, uh, Barack Obama and on his mother's side. And Peter, her brother, and then you go down, descend you, there, and you end up with the family bush. With, with the bushes. Yes, so they, and Amazing. they know, they know they're related. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, but on all the, uh, the, the uh, a lot of the maps from that time, it would say terra nulla, yes. which means empty land. And by no means was it empty land. Uh, that would, you know, that's, that's well, really disrespectful. It was a myth. Uh, well, yes. yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, so we changed all that, and we knew, but the awareness grew. Yes. And if only for that reason, it was, it was really, really worthwhile to, to walk on that journey, which, which we started in 2014. With people which, in the UK and the US. Yes, and our absolutely. And going up and forth and yeah, talking yeah. and discussing and, and, and find, finding common this ground. This is what somebody asked me, a journalist asked me, like now with the epidemic going on, with the pandemic. Yeah. Like, is the entire commemorative year gone? No, because we established long-lasting relationships. Oh. We went through all these programs that, that run not, well beyond not 2020. Not only that, but I would think that the native nations would say, pandemic, that's what happened to us when you <laughs> arrived. Yeah, that's yeah. what blew us away yeah, in the yeah, first yeah. place. It decimized the amount of uh, people of the native nations with us coming and bringing disease that they were not uh, resistant to. So, you know, there's all these... Yeah, yeah, all uh, these uh, yeah. themes and threats yeah, still yeah. running. There's one that I kept for our viewers. It's, you mentioned Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Banks, we've just been in the Leiden Pilgrim yeah. Museum, he claims that Thanksgiving could actually be based on the 3rd of October well. uh, celebrations. Well, he's got I a mean, point. <laughs> uh, what was the 3rd of October for those uh, viewers well, who don't Well, of course, the 3rd of, you did not tell about Leiden not Relief. Yet. Not yet. Oh, but I did see... Four hours. <laughs> I did see... Well, that's, that's quite... Well, for Leiden, for, for people in Leiden not to talk about the Leiden Relief in the first minute is very exceptional. <laughs> um, uh, but I did see, because I was following you on, on Facebook, I did see that you showed the picture of Erin Olaf. Yes. And that was about the uh, Leiden Relief, which was actually the photo some people might, if you if you look yeah. back, that photo was was uh, um, made in the Peterskerk. Um, Leiden relief was uh, our struggle against the Spanish, and uh, so there uh, was a siege. There was a siege going on for long. People were starving. Yeah. People were dying. Yes. And then on the third of October, it's a very romantic story. Um, uh, uh, Water helped us because, you know, we... High were, tide. Yes, high tide and floods and flooding, dikes being flooded, um, um, made that the Spanish finally fled. And then, uh, so on the 3rd of October... Everest deliberately flooded, right? I mean, deliberately flooded. Yes. Yeah, deliberately flooded. And then uh, on the 3rd of October, 1574, uh, um, in the morning, people realized that the siege was over. The Spanish fled. The Spanish fled. We are free. Yes. And then the people of Leiden sort of gathered in the Peterskerk to say thanks and to thank God. Uh, uh, and because the Peterskerk is the central place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the living room of the city, exactly, if you will. Exactly, the living room of the city. So they gathered here to say thanks. And ever since 1574, on the 3rd of October, we have we commemorate that so people the gather relief here. of Leiden exactly, exactly. the third so, of October celebration yes and, and this the, year so, but it would the pilgrims while living here they uh, they would have they, seen it they would have seen it they yes. would have been part of this and uh, what was, annual celebration and what was special was that they would have seen of course the service that was held uh, as a thank you and a mm -hmm. reminder mm -hmm. but what they would also have seen was a combination of uh, a, a, a religious a commemoration and a parade. And uh, um, those combinations and families gathering together. Breaking bread, eating breaking together. Breaking bread, eating yes. together. So, and Herring and white bread. Exactly, exactly. So on the 3rd of October, the city goes wild and everybody up till now lives 
the relief, you know. I know some of our American guests watching were actually here yeah. to one or two years yeah. ago. They yeah. were here and, and they, they were... And they would know that like, is oh very special. Yes. And there's another thing why there might be a connection and Jeremy actually might be right because uh, the proclamation, there were two dates that were important for the Thanksgiving in America. The first was there would be a national Thanksgiving. Yeah. And uh, I'm not quite sure, forgive me, if... I think that was mm -hmm. done by Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, I think yeah. it was Lincoln. And that was done on the 3rd of October. Exactly. And that would have been a little... And then, yeah. a few late years later, on the 3rd of October, it was proclaimed that Thanksgiving was not only yearly, uh, 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 an upcoming... Uh, it would be yearly uh, uh, celebrated, celebrated, but also that it was celebrated on the 3rd of... Uh, of uh, uh, the 3rd... The the third, Thursday of, of yeah. November. November, yes. And also, that also And we was think this third of October, the proclamation on the 3rd of, of October, October, we think that's a little wink. And exactly. Exactly. Well, or a major wink, we don't know. Yeah, well, uh, we, we know, we know. Yeah, we know, uh, we know. We think we know. Um, so, I think, do we have some more time or are we going to go outside? Well, yeah, because uh, later on, that's nice to uh, let the viewers yeah. know. Later on, we end this tour and we end this um, um, well opening, official opening, uh, by showing a very special work by a contemporary Leiden artist, Kasper Fasse. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about that, but um, I don't know. It's, it takes place in this church and it's exactly. absolutely beautiful. So be sure to stick around for the ending. Yeah. Over the, the, the uh, last two weeks, Kasper Faas uh, uh, made that pro project. It's, I've, I've seen it yesterday evening and it was, it's impressive and you'll recognize the Peterskirk in, a, in, a, in, in its full glory and two beautiful dancers. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, uh, but this is also made by Kasper Faas. And uh, Kasper made this because uh, um, this is a painting, and of course it's not the real painting, because no. the real painting, first of all, it, the real painting is a bit bigger, and the real painting uh, is now in Museum de la Cajal. Mm -hmm. it, it, it moved from uh, uh, the Peterskerk uh, to the City Hall, and then moved to, to the la Cajal, Cajal. Yes. or maybe even in between the archives, I'm not quite sure. And uh, it's a painting judgment. by uh, Lucas, uh, Lucas van Leyden. Um, and um, 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 it, it's called At Last Ordeal. The Last Judgment. The yeah. Last Judgment. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, we've got on the right, uh, we've got th uh, the hell on, on the left. We've got uh, heaven and in between there is uh, uh, the Trinity yes. who, uh, uh, will split humanity in, uh, depending on how Make, you lived your judgment. life, Michael. Yes, yes. So, you know, well, it depends. Let's not go into that. <laughs> 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 and then, as in the Lakahal, and, and Kasper was invited, or the Lakahal had invited uh, um, a yeah. modern yeah. Um, uh, artist to, um, to, to work with the idea of a driluik, a, 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 a triptych. A, a triptych. Yeah. And uh, this was what Kasper made because the, the, the material is very, at that time especially, is very new. And I just started working here and we didn't really have a good copy. So Kasper donated this and we're very, very um, happy to have that. To kind What's, of have it back in where it originally was. Uh, well, we would love to have it back where it originally <laughs> was, but that will not happen. And uh, uh, next to it is actually the uh, infrared probably not saying this quite well, a violet uh, red uh, uh, um, uh, painting which shows what's under the uh, ah, yeah. painting. Under the painting. And uh, it, it, it shows how immaculate a painter Lucas of Leiden was. And which is nice to see because that's most of the time is hidden in the lacquer hull. You can also see it if you go, uh, uh, if you go to the backside. There are the two saints, yes. Saint, Saint uh, and the, this, and then we have Peter on the other side with the keys. So, 
And just to give people a sense, I mean, this is 16th century, right? So this yes. is this is well, the, the original, time. yeah, yeah, this the, is the original, yeah, yes, this, yes. yeah, no, we're yes, <laughs> and 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 at that time, you know, the the, the Peterskerk was at that time a Catholic church, and had about anywhere between 40 and 50 different altars. And this was made for one of the altars. So all the altars had their own uh, 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 pastors and had their own choirs and had their own paintings. And um, this was one of the uh, very special paintings uh, and which actually survived uh, because afterwards it became a Protestant church. Yes. And that ended a lot of paintings yeah. and no sculptures. No more paintings. Yes, and, exactly. Yeah. So let's leave with one last uh, shot of this beautiful, uh, well, as we now deemed it, the, um, <laughs> the living room of Leiden. Yes, and what maybe also is important to say is because later on you'll go to the Hortus, and or from here you'll probably go to Jean Poussin and the Hortus, yes. and uh, there's a plaque there on the, one of the pillars, ah, and yes. you can see that's uh, Carolus Clusius, the founder of uh, uh, the Hortus, yep. and one of the deans and, and Manchester's of the u university. The University of Leiden was founded in the Peterskerk a year after the uh, Leiden relief, so in 1570. Five, the University of Leiden has started with, uh, w with the signature on a piece of paper in the Peterskerk and has ever since been deeply connected. And uh, what we also have, we have an enormous collection of people and, and great minds that uh, from that time onwards up till Napoleon um, uh, were buried in the Peterskerk. So it's also called the Mausoleum Academicum. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's, you know... The it's, academic it's, it's, Mausoleum it's, of Leiden. Yes, yes. But Carolius Clusius, you'll see him later we'll, on. We'll on go the to Hortus. the Hortus and yes. we'll talk about him and, yes. uh, of course, uh, his cultivating the tulips around the same yes, time that, exactly. uh, that the pilgrims were there. For now, Frikas, thank you so much well, for this you. tour. Thank uh, you. Great to see you again. And, um, and hope to see our friends in America and England very soon, live. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Yes, you